Hello and welcome to this first video on Laplace transforms. If you've been following our previous videos, we've been looking at how we can solve a range of first and second order differential equations. And in this video, we're going to look at a different technique as to how we can go about that uh, by using what are called Laplace transforms to reach uh, the same solutions. In this video, we're going to start by looking at some of the very basic principles of Laplace transforms and look at some very simple examples. But before we do that, let's first of all take a look at what the Laplace transform involves. Let's suppose, first of all, that we have a function in terms of a given variable. In this particular video, we're going to uh, use functions in terms of time, so f of t. And this function could be a first or a second order differential equation. It could be any uh, type of function. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the Laplace transform to transform it into a function of s, which we'll call f of s. Notice as well we've got a capital um, letter here for this, this function that's been transformed. And that's there to remind us that we've, we've transformed it into um, a different type of function in terms of s. What is S? Well, we can think of S as being kind of like a temporary term. And we call our function of S as being in the S domain rather than our original function, which was in the, the time domain in this case, a function of T, a function of time. And what we find is that the function of S, it's not just a case of replacing all the T's with S's. The function of S looks nothing like the function of T that we started out with. We'll see this in some examples later on. And what we'll find is that it's often a lot simpler to simplify and rearrange our equations when they're in terms of s than it was when they were in their original form. And so the idea being that when we apply the Laplace transform, we can transform our function in the time domain, in this case, to the s domain. And we can make some simplifications. And then when we're happy, we can do what's called the inverse Laplace transform to convert back to the time domain. And we'll hopefully have found our solution in a much clearer form than when we began. We haven't really said what the Laplace transform is exactly yet. So let's suppose we have a function in terms of time t. So it's a function in the time domain. And we want to apply the Laplace transform to it. It doesn't really matter what this function is. Uh, we're just going to call it f t for now, but we'll see some different examples of, of different types of functions later. When we want to apply the Laplace transform, we represent this by surrounding our function with uh, curly brackets with this sort of um, scripted L uh, for Laplace at the, at the start. So what we're seeing here is that we're going to apply the Laplace transform to this enclosed function here. And what that means in, in sort of mathematical terms is something that looks like this. We're going to integrate between the bounds of zero and infinity the function e to the minus st multiplied by that function of t, whatever that function happens to be. Um, and that's integrated with respect to dt. Now, firstly, some good news. Um, we're never actually going to use this equation in this series of videos. And the reason for that is because nearly every possible function that we'll encounter has already been transformed. And these can be commonly found in standard tables of Laplace transforms. So an internet search for Laplace transform table or similar will yield plenty of results. And here's an example that we've produced here as well. So here in our table, you can see that the first column is a function in terms of time. And we have a range of different functions going down here. And in our second column, we have that function in, term of, in terms of s. In other words, uh, the function after the Laplace transform has been applied to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this table quite a lot in this series of videos in order to perform the Laplace transform, converting f of t to f of s, and performing the inverse Laplace transform as well, taking functions in the form of f of s 
and transforming them back into functions of time as well. Again, for our purposes, we're not really going to get bogged down with the theory of what S is exactly, because as we'll see in, in later videos, we're, we're going to convert to the S domain and we're going to perform some rearrangement, some simplification, and then we're going to convert back to the time domain again. And so really we can think of S as just being a, a temporary or a placeholder kind of term uh, that we use to our advantage. In this particular video, we're only going to focus on the Laplace transform from the function of time, um, from the time domain, to the S domain. We're just going to be looking at that simple transformation in a few examples in a second. In our next video, we're going to look at the inverse transform. Um, we're going to be moving from the S domain, converting back to the time domain. And then in subsequent videos, we're going to put those two together to show how we can use that to solve equations like first and second order differential equations. Let's look at three very simple examples in this particular video to begin with. Firstly, let's suppose we're asked to perform the Laplace transform on this function of time here, e to the power minus 3t. Rather than doing any integration between the bounds of zero and infinity or anything like that, we're going to immediately return to the table of standard Laplace transforms that we saw because it's very likely that the hard work has already been done for us. So in the table, we'll see an entry here, um, e to the minus a t. And we see that this transforms in the s domain to 1 over s plus a. So it's clear that the only difference for us is that a is equal to 3 in our particular function. And so our solution here, we can write the Laplace transform of e to the minus 3t is equal to 1 over s plus 3 when in the s domain. Here's another example. Let's suppose we're asked to find the Laplace transform of 2 sine 5t. In this example, we see that the function of t has been multiplied by 2. So there's a coefficient here of 2 before the sine function. We're allowed to place this outside of the Laplace operation because the Laplace transform only applies to the part of the function in terms of t. The exception being if the number is a constant as a separate term. For example, if, if the function was sine t plus 5. Uh, we'll see something like this in the next example. But what we can do mathematically in this case is we can write, um, rather than the Laplace transform of 2 sine 5t, we can write that that's equal to 2 times the Laplace transform of sine 5t. We can take that coefficient outside of the Laplace operation. Let's again consult our table of standard Laplace transforms. And we'll notice one entry here, uh, the transformation of the function sine omega t. And in our case, it's clear that omega equals 5. And so what we can say is 2 times the, the Laplace transform of sine 5t is equal to 2 times 5 over s squared plus 5 squared. And we've, again, we've kept that coefficient of 2 here, but we can multiply out that bracket to say that that's equal to 10 over s squared plus 5 squared. Here's one last example for this video. And uh, let's suppose we're asked to find the Laplace transform of a polynomial expression like this one. We've got 5 plus 3t plus 2t to the power 4. This is no more difficult because with separate terms like these in our polynomial expression, we're allowed to evaluate each term separately. So rather than the Laplace transform of that whole polynomial, we can say that that's equal to the Laplace transform of 5 plus the Laplace transform of 3t, plus the Laplace transform of 2t to the power 4. And again, remembering, we're allowed to take these coefficients outside of the Laplace transform, and so we can rewrite that again as the Laplace transform of 5, plus 3 times the Laplace transform of t, plus 2 times the Laplace transform of t to the power 4. 
again, we can return to our table of standard Laplace transforms because uh, we have a constant here. The number 5 is a constant. And the term t and the term t to the power 4 can be converted um, respectively with their entries in the table. We have um, our constant 5 becomes 5 over s. We have our function just t by itself becomes 1 over s squared. And remembering that that's been multiplied by 3, so we have 3 1 over s squared, plus 2 times the Laplace transform of t to the power 4. Well, that Laplace transform becomes 4 factorial over s to the power 5, if we refer to that entry in the table. And just as a reminder, if you're not sure what the, the factorial uh, exclamation mark means, it's the product of all the positive integers less than or equal to that, get that number. So in this case, uh, 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is uh, equal to 24. And so our final result is 5 over s plus 3 times 1 over s squared plus 2 times 24 over s5, which simplifies to 5 over s plus 3 over s squared plus 48 over s to the power 5. And we'll leave this video there with some simple examples. In our next video, we're going to look at the inverse Laplace transform, how we can take functions like we've ended up with here in the s domain and convert them back into the time domain again.